Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-1506, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures High-resolution satellite imagery is to be processed by computer for possible SCP-1506-1 occurrences. Once confirmed as an occurrence, SCP-1506-1's position is to be monitored and checked against computer modeling of wind patterns. Should SCP-1506-1 rapidly descend or ascend into a wind current predicted to take SCP-1506-1 through human-populated areas, Mobile Task Force 517, the arachnophobes, are to be readied for procedures 1506-A, B, and C. Procedure 1506-A Using mobile anti-smog fans, Mobile Task Force 517 are to attempt to guide SCP-1506-1 into a wind current predicted to take SCP-1506-1 towards a local nature reserve populated with larger mammalia. If necessary to disguise the procedure from the public, cover will be provided as cutting-edge industrial agriculture testing in rural areas and as air quality specialists in urban areas. Procedure 1506-B Should 1506-A fail to keep SCP-1506-1 away from human population centers, Mobile Task Force 517 are to begin Type B amnestic treatment as necessary for witnesses of predation. Procedure 1506-C Mobile Task Force 517 are to use mobile stasis locks to contain the area around SCP-1506-1, while flamethrowers and Arachnocyte-7 are used to disperse SCP-1506-1. Arachnocyte-7's boiling point is above 1,500 degrees Celsius, making it safe to use with conventional flamethrowers. Under no circumstances may Arachnocyte-7 be used without stasis locks active to contain the aftermath. Arachnocyte 7 must not be allowed to enter the biosphere. Procedure 1506-D Following Incident 1506-Sigma, any instance of SCP-1506-1 larger than 200 cubic meters in commercial flight paths are cleared for immediate barometric implosion using FAE detonation contained via mobile stasis lock. SCP-1506-1-14 is contained at Site-9 in a pressure-controlled large animal containment cell. Atmospheric pressure is to be maintained to keep SCP-1506-1-14 approximately in the center of the containment cell. When SCP-1506-1-14 descends to an artificial altitude of less than 500 meters, viable prey animals are to be introduced to the cell. It has been calculated that kilograms of food over a four-week period will help keep the colony at its current size. In the event of containment breach, Arachnocyte 7 will be deployed in combination with increasing containment cell pressure to atmospheres. Arachnocyte 7 must not be allowed to enter the biosphere. The following are outdated containment procedures. SCP-1506's position is to be monitored and checked against computer modeling of wind patterns. Should SCP-1506 rapidly descend or ascend into a wind current predicted to take SCP-1506 through human-populated areas, Mobile Task Force 57 are to be readied for procedures 1506-A and B. Description SCP-1506 is the designation for the global phenomenon which spontaneously generates instances of SCP-1506-1. SCP-1506-1 is the designation for anomalous colonies of at least approximately 900 spiders of mixed species. By application of multiple varieties of spider silk, SCP-1506-1 is able to build complex web structure less dense than air in which the spiders may live. SCP-1506-1 exhibits remarkable behavior, as individual spiders are rarely seen working in cooperation and never in cross-species cooperation. SCP-1506-1 also shows changes in predation behavior, web tension strength, and web adhesion. SCP-1506-1 has been found at altitudes of up to 18 kilometers. In order to change altitude, the volume of SCP-1506-1 is increased or decreased, suggesting the web structure is being consistently maintained. 
When SCP-1506-1 descends below 500 meters, it is to be assumed that the colony will soon begin predation behavior. Thus far, it is unknown how spiders are able to detect their prey at this height. SCP-1506-1's preferred method of predation is to spin a web to the ground from altitude. Any animalia touching the spider web will instantly adhere and be unable to remove the web. Only live animal matter exhibits this effect. When enough food has been caught, SCP-1506-1 will reel in the web at kilometers per hour. When SCP-1506-1 has fully reeled in its prey, the web structure will engulf the animal. Consumption of prey takes place over days, dependent on both the size of the prey and the colony. Humans take approximately five days for an average-sized colony to digest. The largest single prey animal recorded has been an elk, taking 11 days to digest. Waste is allowed to fall freely, leaving a desiccated husk that will often shatter on impact. SCP-1506-1 was first identified as SCP-1506 before the realization of multiple instances. SCP-1506-1 was first brought to the Foundation's attention on 2000 when a viral video thought to originate in Chile showed a man walking through the streets of at 0247 local time according to the timestamps. For two minutes he is tracked by eight security cameras the footage of which has been seamlessly edited together, until he suddenly stops walking whilst looking very startled. The subject of the video begins brushing at his arms and face before vanishing. High-speed analysis shows that he had been dragged vertically out of the frame. The poor resolution of the security footage has made it impossible to determine the actual speed, but kilometers per hour is within estimations. The footage has been doctored to remove the three frames and has been publicly revealed to be part of the viral campaign for energy drink. SCP-1506-114 is a colony captured on 2000. Cameras placed on prey animals have shown internal structure to be incredibly complex. The colony is divided into living chambers and buoyancy chambers, with no genus of spider noticeably more active in web maintenance. Every foreign spider introduced to the colony has been accepted without incident. Introducing new spider species to SCP-1506-114 is now banned. 200 different spiders from around the world have been introduced to the colony, and it is believed that there is no more data to be gained from this research. SCP-1506-114 is being studied to determine longevity of the colony. So far, the colony remains healthy in a simulated high-altitude environment, feeding when necessary. Using remote cameras to explore the structure has proven a failure, as all attempts have had the drone immobilized by web and excreted in the usual manner. Spider-mounted cameras have failed in a similar manner. The only successful method to obtain internal visuals is through prey-mounted camera, which allows only for stationary video feeds. Tests indicate a normal oxygen and atmospheric pressure level within the living chambers. Little headway has been made as to the mode of transmission of SCP-1506, but the most favored theory is communication of learned behavior. Investigation is ongoing into how the spiders communicate. Research on the Malos Gregalis and other social spiders has been promising, but so far no headway has been made. So far, SCP-1506-1 has appeared on all continents except Antarctica and shows no preference for member spider species, either solitary or social. Addendum Event 1501 Alpha Playing Log Now I think it's trying to pretend it's a weather balloon, but weather balloons don't float this low. Great! We found the killer low-flying weather balloon. I guess we could pop it. They're called Special Containment Procedures. Not, Not special, special Destruction, destruction procedures. procedures. Yeah, I get it. It would save time, though. I'm going in for a closer look. Stay sharp. Three minutes, 42 seconds of radio silence as Agent R approaches location. I've got visual on the binoculars. I can see it pulsing. It looks like it's made out of fabric. What do you think? Giant butterfly net? Lasso? I don't think we're bringing this one in ourselves. Uh, we're gonna need nerds. Hey, don't be like that. They're why we have jobs. Not them. 
I stepped in a spider web. Agent R's radio device transmits a 16-second scream, followed by heavy breathing and sobbing. Oh God, they're crawling on me! I can't move! God, it's so hot! Oh God! Agent R was in radio contact for a further 18 hours and 7 minutes. During this time, Agent R was unable to provide more useful information on the nature of SCP-1506. Event 1506, Sigma, on 2000, SCP-1506-19 collided with commercial flight. SCP-1506-19 had been under special observation due to its significant volume. It has been theorized that SCP-1506-19 contained over a million individual spiders. On impact with flight, SCP-1506-19 was observed to burst. The web structure was observed to cling to the plane for 40 seconds before being pulled into a damaged seam between fuselage panels. The black box flight recorder indicates these spiders entered the flight cabin, causing significant damage to the aircraft's electronics, including radio equipment. The flight continued for another 78 minutes before crashing. The following is an excerpt from the recording. Playing log now. What the fuck was that? Shit, I don't know. Give me the fucking mic. This is your co-pilot for today. We do apologize for the flight turbulence back there. We do our best to make your flight as smooth as possible, but the occasional hiccup will happen. We thank you for your understanding and remember to keep flying with airlines. Okay, what in the fuck happened? I thought it was a cloud, all right? Clouds don't make a bang when you hit them. I meant to be on break. Seriously. What is wrong with you? Don't... Don't tell me you thought it was anything other than cloud cover. You were looking! I was meant to take a nap in half an hour, and now my heart's racing. Thanks for that. Well, piss off then! Metallic banging can be heard, assumed to be flight attendant at the cockpit door. I just want a nap! Jesus, what did I do? What is it? Use the phone! Banging continues. I'll have a look. Oh, fuck. Oh fuck, oh fuck! What? Mayday, mayday! This is flight in immediate distress. Require urgent assistance on spider infestation. Over! What the fuck? Can they get through the door? This is insane! This is flight Our flight cabin has been compromised by spiders and they're fucking everywhere! Someone fucking come in! Over! Pan, pan! Mayday! Anyone! Recording skips 60 minutes. For full audio file, see 15061-9BB. .mp3. Aileron's okay. Rudder, okay. Elevator's okay. Radio, fucked. Well, at least we're not dead stick. 30 seconds of silence. We agreed this is what we have to do. I don't want to die. Neither do I. Neither do. If we're doing this, it has to be now. We're getting too close to. I hope it's fast. We'll be the first to hit. The plane is behind us. It's a rock and a hard place. Sure it'll burn? I've set all the fuel safety options to off. I hope so. Sand for miles. Do it. Recording continues in silence for four minutes until impact. Flight was over an uninhabited area for the crash, preventing further casualties. It is believed that the resulting explosion and dispersal of the spiders that made up SCP-150619 is responsible for the increased generation rate of SCP-1506-1. Okay, now that we've got that absolute nightmare out of the way, this thankfully concludes today's lecture. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and I'm sorry. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Alatreon, Zargaran, Professor Puffer, Retalius, JK, Signar, your local Foundation agent, Derivative, Gabriel Hawkins, Nate the Clown, Lost Boy, A Real American Hebrew, Sio Dio Demnatus, Eric Corbage, 
Longinus, Karim El Ashmoe, James Saba, and NJ Vojak. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash thevulgan. Thank you.